Now, for those of you, I don't know if you could hear that. You can hear in the background those who know what that's about. That Sunday morning ride to church song. Okay, if you didn't hear that song, then your ride wasn't a ride to church. Okay, if you didn't hear come on in the room, then you didn't have a ride to church. So that was come on in the room. Thank you, Dr. Brexit. Cool, you heard it. So that, uh, oh, I must say this. I don't own the rights to that song, okay? Just letting you know, I don't own the rights to that song. So that was come on in the room. So come on and join me in the room today. Once again, blessed to see another week. I never take it lightly to see another day, another week, assuming that we're going to see it because there's so many that did not. And so I'm very thankful to be here. I'm very thankful uh, that we're blessed to have another week to have this Dr. Rob Empowerment Podcast. And I won't spend too much time with the introduction because I want to get right into it. We have a, another dynamic guest today, and that is none other than Mr. Minister Cameron Bracey. So this is a young man who is uh, just a, a passionate a sincere, genuine, authentic, um, fire for the Lord uh, person. So I, I definitely think you all will be blessed. So make sure that you share, share, share uh, as we get ready to bring him on. And um, over the past weeks, we've had some dynamic, some really dynamic uh, guests. For example, our guest today is the eldest son of our guest a couple of weeks ago, Dr. Yolanda Bracey. And Elder Mike Bracey. So this is their eldest and they are truly uh, have done a wonderful job in what they've done. And of course they did all that they should do. And then it was up to him and God to do the rest. So we get to hear about that today. And so if you did not get a chance to, as school is going back, if you didn't get a chance to see that interview with Dr. Bracey, you want to make sure that you um, go on my podcast, my webpage, you can go to any podcast, you just find the Dr. Rob Empowerment Podcast or whatever platform, you should be able to find it. Uh, make sure that you check that one out. It was a very inform informational and impactful uh, interview with Dr. Bracey. Last week, I had a couple of my Avengers, as I call them, uh, the uh, two of the people out of the group that did my spring training for the certification for uh, becoming an empowerment coach. So I had two of them on, the two that were able to make it, and we had a great time. The time went by so fast, so they shared a little bit about their experience. They shared about how they um, uh, enjoyed and, and what they got from the certification six-week training program. And also we talked about the one that's coming up this fall, starting on September 11th. So you need to register if you really feel called. Now, this is not something just jump into. Six-week commitment, if you feel called, that you have what it takes to help people go to their next level and whatever it is. Okay, we're not life coaching. We're helping you with your purpose, with goals, with ideas that you got to get done. And you in that wish I could have would have state, but you really, you know, want to help people to get out of that and get to uh, what they're supposed to do. Uh, that's what that's about. So you want to join that. That's uh, September 8th will be the last day to register. It starts on Monday, September 11th. So think about it, pray about it. And if you want to do it, be about it, all right? And we've had some wonderful guests. We talked to Tamitha Conway, girls in construction or women in construction. We've talked to John Two Rice. We've talked to uh, author Flora uh, Jackson and, and talking about their books coming up and so many more. And we have so many more guests coming uh, throughout this year as God allows. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity. So without further ado, I want to get our guest on. I want to make sure he is on. Make sure if you're watching, you're sharing. And let me check to make sure he is here. And let's see if we can get him in. So we are going to bring on, like I said, Mr. Cameron Bracey. He is the founder and the uh, chief minister, the CEO of Cameron Bracey Ministries. You go check out his CameronBraceyMinistries.org. Check out his logo alone is worth going onto the website. It's a sharp logo, but you want to go on his website, see the wonderful things that God is doing to him and through him. And um, if you want to support, we'll talk about that. Also give him opportunity to share on that. All right. So without further ado, let's see if we can get him connected on. 
Let's see. We, we got him, you all. We got there the go. man himself. <laughs> there he is. What's going go. on? How Delayed is not denied. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> that just means repositioning. As I told someone when I did an interview, um, I, I had to, was interviewing me about one of my books. And so I, I my route coming home, there was a police you know, whatever issue, accident on expressway. So it totally took me off uh, my regular route. And I said, and I told her it was uh, just like in writing a book, how she was talking about when people get writer's block. And I said, just like the example of me coming, yeah. I was supposed to be here at a certain time, that traffic accident or whatever the blockage, yes, it was a hindrance and it did take me out of, of my normal route, but it just detoured me. It did not deny me or uh, prevent me from getting to my destination. Amen. So detours or delays don't they don't pre don't let them allow you uh, to prevent you from getting to your destination. It just means that you're just being routed a different way, and right. God is still going to get you to what you got to do and where you got to be. So, right. Mr. Cameron Bracy, thank you, sir. Thank I'm you. Thank you for having. Excited me. for being having you on here. Of course, I'm excited and love all the guests that I've had, um, but I'm, I'm truly looking forward to just talking with you. <laughs> And we are going to just jump into it. So <clears throat> before uh, we get in, started into having questions and things like that, why don't you share a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Um, so for those of you that may not know, my name is Cameron Bracey. Um, I am, as Dr. Rob said, um, I am the founder of Cameron Bracey Ministries, but I even like to say more so I am a servant. God is overall number one. He is the head. Uh, we don't make any any decisions. We don't do anything without his green light. Um, but clearly, you know, first of all, I'm a man of God. Uh, I'm a husband uh, to Crystal Bracy. Awesome, awesome, awesome wife. We've been married for three and a half years, be four years in February. Um, and then uh, I am a father to actually two uh, beautiful children, um, Solomon Bracy, who is one. He'll be two in October. And then Mia Bracy who is, uh, she just turned three months, actually, just wow. turned three months on Friday, wow. so. Wow, yeah, wow. Yeah. So a lot going on in this uh, season of life, but I definitely, I, I enjoy it, I embrace it, I love being busy, so I enjoy it. Awesome, I, yeah, I truly, and that, that leads me to my next question. So with that, let's talk about the man, the marriage, the ministry, the father. So how do you balance all these hats that you wear um, in your yeah. life? How do you balance all of that? I, I would say sacrifice. Um, a lot of planning, being intentional with my time. I don't waste a lot of time um, doing things that are useless. I don't waste time doing things that um, really would take away from my day. Don't get me wrong. Um, I do rest. I've learned to embrace rest. I just did a whole yes. teaching on rest. Uh, but, you know, um, I, I remember before when I first started doing everything, um, I would just say, man, how am I going to fit all of this in one day while also trying to sleep in? And I remember one day I was praying and God was just like, you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to see what can you cut? Where can you, when can you wake up? And I have a habit now of just waking up early, even if it means I got to wake up at 6 a.m. just to, you know, record a sermon, you know, have my Facebook posts and Instagram posts all scheduled for the day, um, YouTube and everything, um, you know, then preparing for whatever other teaching I have to do so that I can also be present and attentive to my family, because that is clearly um, part of being obedient to God. You know, I have to be a husband. I have to be a father. I cannot neglect them for the ministry, you know. So uh, just being intentional with my time. I don't waste a lot of time watching, you know, TV. I don't watch uh, sports at all, really. Um, you know, and when I am on social media, it's literally um, when I'm sharing the encouraging post and uh, teaching at all. So, yeah, be, I would say being intentional. That's the main thing with balance is being intentional with your time. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Being intentional. So I want to just pause right there. Being intentional with your time. Something I learned early on in ministry from, uh, you know, growing up with our youth pastor at the time, he used to always say two things you can't get back or either Dr. Miles Monroe or somebody, but two things you can't get back once they're gone, time and people. That's right. And so being intentional, being a good stewardship over uh, those things are so important. That's so right. I like the fact that you said being intentional with your time, being able to balance all of these things um, that you are doing. So you have two beautiful children. They are they are the gorgeous, gorgeous little children. Uh, <laughs> little prophet I call the Solomon. And then the daughter is Mia. Yep. Is that her name? Mia. Yep, okay. Mia, yep. 
and she, she's a little Barbie doll. So, and then your lovely wife, you all been married going on four years already in yep, February? Four years in February. February 13th will be four years. Man, that's it's a whole, easy to remember because we got That's a whole, whole bachelor's degree, earning a bachelor's degree four right. years. So you, y'all going through your bachelor's degree <laughs> in your perfect. marriage. Yep, yep, awesome, yep. awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> cool, cool. Congratulations. That's beautiful family. Very beautiful family. So I'm going to just throw some things out there to you. Heroes, some of your heroes. Now I'm putting that disclaimer word, some. So if you're watching and oh, he didn't mention me. Listen, I said some, he's, you know, we only have a certain amount of time. So he's going to throw out some of your heroes that inspired you to be who you are and where you want to be. Yeah, uh, I would clearly say number one, Jesus, number one. He's number one, number one hero. He died for us, died for our sins. Um, If it weren't for him, we wouldn't have his word today. So number one, Jesus. Uh, number two, I would um, definitely say uh, my parents. You know, I've seen my parents sacrifice a lot. Uh, I've seen my parents do quite, you know, quite a few things as we were growing up. Um, some things, you know, you don't understand as a child. You don't truly understand or, you know, recognize until you're an adult. So I would definitely say they're a hero. Uh, I look at Crystal. Crystal is a hero. Just seeing her birth our two children, that process in itself is not a yeah. joke. And I mean, I am not over exaggerating when I say this, but she did both deliveries she took them both like a champ i mean it wasn't all that screaming and hollering she was right. phenomenal and my mom my grandmother they're, they're all a witness to it um outside of uh my grandparents for sure uh, my grandparents were hard working outside of that if you want me to name people who are probably well known in society uh i would have to say pastor mike signorelli is one uh, I've looked up to my mom actually jokes sometimes. I look up to Pastor pa- Pastor John Ponder so much. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's poured into me um, since I was a teenager. Uh, he's just, you know, he's he's mentored me, I guess you could say, in a way. Um, even if we don't speak on a month to month basis or whatever you want to say, he's definitely been there. He's poured into me. Um, you know, I, I always say I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for some of the words that he actually poured into me um, at such a young age. So I didn't recognize some of those things. So. Uh, Pastor Mike Signorelli, Pastor John Ponder, Pastor Steve, you know, I, I always say, hey, my creativity, seeing him in action and everything, it really showed like, man, I can do the same thing. If he can do it, why can't I? Yeah. Um, and then uh, I would say, last but not least, uh, not least, uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes. I definitely love Bishop T.D. Jakes. And I love his uh, his teachings and just all that he does, how he's not just a minister, but he's also, you know, director and he's an author and he's just up. He balances all. He doesn't, you know, sure. put everything in one basket so those are some sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah i definitely respect you named some wonderful wonderful folks some of them i know and uh i agree i agree totally agree so tell me <clears throat> when was your samuel in the bed moment <laughs> when, when, when was that moment when it was like you know i'm i'm called to be more than just Growing up, I'm yeah. young, I can go, you know, do my thing. I can, yeah. you know, I, I got my swag. I, I don't have to be as as some in our in in your age group would say ball and chain. In my age group too, ball and chain, being married at an early age and all of that. When was your in the bed Samuel moment when it's like I need to go to that next level and have uh, such a level of commitment that you do uh, to Christ? That's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, I would say September of 2018. Um, I was uh, actually in the shower. I was praying uh, just 10, you know, in the shower. It's just when I really go in, Crystal laugh at me, laughs at me because she hears me all the time praying. But I was in the shower praying and I remember just asking God, you know, what does he want me to do? And at the time I was in the nursing program, but I wasn't a hundred percent. I liked it. I, you know, I definitely liked it. Anybody who knows me knows I liked it. I can't say, you know, when I'm, if I'm being completely 100% honest and transparent, I can't say that I absolutely loved it, though. I, it was mm-hmm. always something where I was like, I'm seeking more. You know, I used to tell Crystal, like, I'll do this for a few years, but I know I'm probably going to want to I'm going to want to do something else. And I knew that when it comes to your calling, you don't look forward to doing something else. You're like, I just want to grow in this particular area, meaning whatever it, whatever comes with it, I'm going to take it on. Um, I had actually gotten out of the shower that evening and I had got a uh, message from Natalie uh, Jamerson, who you know, and she messaged me asking me to uh, be a part of the men's panel at the at Family Christian Center's Women's Conference. And I remember uh, I was shocked, a little thrown off because it was a men's panel and um, it was all married men. 
then um except me and uh this other young guy we were both uh considered single i was dating crystal at the time but you know legally single um and i remember i got there and i was you know nervous little i guess you could say uh intimidated quote unquote didn't let it show on my face but definitely on the inside felt a little intimidated because i'm like mm -hmm. here i am speaking against these uh married not speaking against but speaking with these married men um you know pastor ponder was up there so like i said he's one of my heroes somebody who i've looked up to my entire life i'm like oh my gosh what am i gonna say in front of him i just don't know what i'm gonna do but i remember i was sitting up there and you know we went through it and it was just like the holy spirit just took over not like it was holy spirit just took over there were things that I said that didn't even know it was in me. And I will never forget, we got back to the, the uh, you know, we, we went through that whole panel. People were saying, oh, you are anointed. Oh, the, the words you said were just so good. Oh, mm -hmm. you need to do more. And I'm, you know, I'm in, in that season, I was in, in nursing school. So I'm like, oh, this, this, this isn't, you know, whatever. But I, I definitely loved being on the stage. I loved teaching. I loved pouring out and the response that I had gotten was definitely not what I had expected. You know, I felt the least up there and it was like the response was just so great though. So I remember I went back to the, we went back to backstage, basically back to the room after the panel and Pastor Ponder, again, my hero, who I looked up to, I look up to, to this day, um, he came up to me and said, you know, I want to let you know that it was me who put your name out there. And I said, huh? And he said, I put your name out there. Cause again, I had no idea that a men's panel was going on. I had no idea right. that this was even a thing. And he's like, yeah, he's like, you're wise. You have a gift. I believe you're called in this area. I just don't think you've seen it. So I'm like, oh, okay. So, you know, I'm praying. I'm, I'm seeking God some more and everything. I loved it. Da, 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 da. Well, September, or not September, December of 2018 comes. And uh, that's when I fell actually out of the nursing program. It's something I used to be ashamed of talking about, but I'm bold about it today. Uh, I failed out of the nursing program, and I will never forget when I had gotten a notification that I failed out, that I can no longer continue forward. I came home, went back to my my prayer closet, which just happens to be the bathroom, just where I get on my knees and really seek God, and you know, it's just my place. Uh, seeking him in there, and I'm just like, hey, uh, Lord, you know, I don't know what else to do. I've sat here, you know, I've put in a, a year and a half, two years of, of this time into the nursing program. Everybody on social media knows this is what I was going for. Why would you shift me at the, like, wh what is going on? I don't know what else to do. And that was my first time in life really failing at anything. I've always pretty much succeeded in school. I've succeeded in the sports that I should say I committed myself to. That was the first thing that I really, you know, I, I worked so hard at and I failed. I, it just wouldn't grasp for, for any reason. So I remember, you know, I had went to my mom, you know, I'm talking to her about it. She ends up calling Pastor Ponder because she knows that's like my right hand dude right there. So I call him. He's just like, I'm sorry that this happened, Cameron. You know, basically his thing was just see God, see what he wants you to do. Just, you know, seek him. So I remember I would say for about three weeks was just like a stressful three weeks in December. I was just totally out of it. Didn't know what I'm going to do. Hence, I'm only 20. I'm only 21 years old. So I'm acting like it's the end of the world. I'm like, God, what do you want me to do? Where am I supposed to be? What What is it you, you've called me to do? What Who have you called me to be? And I know that it's more than being a nurse because clearly this happened for a reason. He had me like snap out of it at that time. So I remember uh, came January, um, he just really started pouring into me. And that was when I really, I mean, I had read, I was already reading my Bible and really into it, but I like went to another level of commitment and being in his word. It was just like another level. I mean, of you think a medical student studies a lot, you know, medicine and everything. I mean, I was in that word. I went to work, come home, I'm in that word. I'm, you know, I'm, I go to the gym, I'm coming home in that word. I mean, it was just so many things that I was just shaving off in my life. Again, being intentional with the time. And I said, you know what, I'm just gonna be in my word. And even as I was in my word, I noticed that God started to like give me these, these words on the inside. I said, Lord, I cannot, I can't hold this in. I can't do this. I can't do this too much longer. Um, and that's when I wrote my uh, first book. I said, don't, it's called, Don't Give Up Just Yet. You Still Have a Purpose. Um, and that was, that book, I really was just speaking from the bottom of my heart because I had just been through a season where I was ready to give up. I had lost hope. I didn't know where I was gonna go. And a lot of people say, oh, I was encouraged by the book. Oh, your words are so good. You were speaking right to me. My intent wasn't really to write to other people. I was writing to myself. I was right. speaking really to myself, encouraging myself. And I said, I'm just gonna put these words on a page. Like the published diary, huh? Yeah, yeah. never, never published a book before. 
never, you know, I, I don't even think I read the publishing process. I just like God literally was just really putting this fire inside of me. That was like, Cameron, forget with all of what man has to say and all of these processes. If you trust me, I'm going to guide each and every one of your steps. I look back today, I'm going to tell you right now, that cover is just absolutely terrible. I think the layout of the book was absolutely terrible, but I tell people the content itself is great. Forget all the superficial stuff, the content is great. Just read the words and you'll be blessed by it. Um, and now that, that started my process of really uh, going all in with the uh, full, you know, teaching and everything. And then um, just to fast forward a little bit, you know, four books later, you can say, I remember one day, Crystal and I, we had already moved into our home we're living in now. And I was sitting on the couch and I told her, I said, babe, I really think I want to start uh, my own ministry, not my own church. You know, some people confuse the two. I said my own ministry. I was like, I, I, you know, I have all these words inside of me. Um, I'm, I'm in my word a lot. I have these ideas in my head and I'm just one where as long as they're there, I know God is not going to let it go until I do it. I'm just, just big on doing it. Everything else will fall into place. Um, in November, 20, November of 2021, um, Cameron Bracey Ministries, I'm going to say was legally uh, published. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> it had already been in the works, but, you know, legally recognized by the state of Indiana. Yeah, that's when it really went out. And then I'm here today just being faithful. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. So your journey, you said, started in 2018? 2018, when yes, you started sir. When that spark or that seed was sown to give you that opportunity yep. by a mentor in your yep. life who, who often when they see things in us that we may not see. Absolutely. And then they, they put you in platforms or help God use them to put you in platforms that help cultivate and germinate that, that gift that's within yes. you. Yes. And that's, uh, that's awesome. Which prepared you for what was to come in regards to school so that you can realize that gift. So that's awesome. That's an awesome journey. So in uh, 2021, you started the uh, Cameron Bracey Ministry. So tell me about CBM. Yeah. What is it that you're doing? And you got some great things I've seen on the website, which I'm you know, always impressed with um, the kind of end of the year, the school, the seasonal uh, November yeah. events that you've been doing and also how you're blessing students. You've been doing that for several years. Mm -hmm. And so tell us about about those outreaches that you have. Yeah. Uh, so every year in November, um, actually, you know, I've heard a lot of people in my lifetime say they they've always wanted to feed the poor, feed the homeless, feed those families in need. Um, and Crystal knows me. I'm, I'm just real big on just do it. Everything will fall into place. Everybody wears the Nike shirts that say just do it, but nobody actually does what the shirt says. So uh, last year, to be honest with you, was our first year doing it. Um, I would say that we probably officially started planning it in about, it was in November, I'll probably say late September and um probably started planning it in late september and there's a guy who uh, a friend of mine who actually goes to the church uh and he's a he's a chef and um i remember you know reaching out to him and i just said hey man i got this idea um i want to you know see if you would like to partner along and do this and we can get all the details worked out and everything but this is something i want to get on the books now and just do it uh so he was like oh my gosh man i've never I've always wanted to do something like this, but nobody has just come out and, and actually took that initiative. Um, so we reached out, I reached out to him. We met with the principal of the uh, Hammond Area Career Center. Um, I love her, she's an amazing woman. Um, we pretty much got all of the information together, you know, and there were rules you clearly gotta follow because follow it's a school property. So, you know, it's not like it's something where I'm in a park and we could just do whatever we want, but um, there were rules, but you know what? We fed the people who came um, it was definitely a blessing. Um, you know, it, again, it was a blessing. We, we, we fed, I would probably say my first year, it was probably about, I'll say anywhere from 20 to 45, maybe at the most 50 people, um, came out and were fed. Um, we had, I think food prepared for about two to 300 because that's how many signed up. Um, but it just turned out to be one of those super cold days of the year, you know, mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, I don't want to go out this year, but we'll be doing it again this year um, on November 11th for anybody who may know anyone who's in need or anyone who uh, just needs a meal. Uh, we're going to do it on November 11th, which actually falls on Veterans Day. So that's that was uh, our first time doing that last year. And then the college uh, student blessing was also something else I did last year uh, just because I 
knew what it was like to be a college student. Clearly, I graduated from college. And I just know that some things just simple as books, it just can be be a burden on you, you know. Um, it can kind of be stressful, you know. Um, and I'm blessed because I had my, you know, I had my parents, my mom and my dad who definitely helped, who, you know, supported me so much throughout school, um, took care of a lot of the financial aspect of things. You know, my part was just to basically keep up the good grades and pass the classes. <laughs> Uh, they took on the financial burden with it. But um, I knew what came with that. And I remember just Crystal and I were like, well, let's just give what we can give. So we ended up blessing um, two students, uh, I believe was with about $150, $200, um, just to cover basically any book fees that they may have. So we did that. Wow. And then um, we also did a Christmas blessing last year, actually for the past two years. The first year, uh, we blessed St. Jude's Children's, uh, St. Jude's, actually um women's shelter women and children's shelter here in crown point we bless those families in need those women you know who are being sheltered there then last year we blessed uh children at about three hospitals we had purchased a whole bunch of gifts that were sent to those hospitals and just really reaching those people who you know everybody doesn't see many people probably don't think about so true yeah so, so true yeah. is i mean you 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 all are doing some really, really impactful things. And, and I like what you said about being about it. I'm not just talking about it, but being about it. Just yeah. do it, figure it out as you go sometimes, because that's that's ministry, that's business, that's just anything. Yeah. Sometimes you have to figure it out as you go um, versus trying to get it all right or perfect before. Right. Sometimes we take that step of faith, trust God, and he just begins to unfold and find favor and connect you with divine connections. So yeah. how can people support uh, what you all are doing yeah excuse me um yeah they can go to cameron bracing ministries uh dot org they can go to the website and um if they ever want to donate um they can donate there you know i'm one uh crystal laughs at me you know my little brothers laugh at me i don't usually you know you'll see in all of my teachings i don't ask really for anyone to ever donate it's just something if you're moved by the cause or if you're inspired by its teaching you can uh honestly quick pay us via zale uh, all the links on the website, you know, you can donate via Zelle, Venmo, or PayPal, or you can even make checks payable to Cameron Bracing Ministries. Um, and again, all of that information is on our website at CameronBracingMinistries.org. So and that is the way they do that. Um, and then I even like to say, uh, anybody, you know, some people say, how can we get your word out there? What else can we do to support? If you want to do it for free, I mean, I tell people the easiest thing you can do today is just share. Share the posts, mm -hmm. you know, share the YouTube video, share the content you see. I mean, just whoever it reaches, I mean, that's that's the best way to support. I'm not in it for the money. I'm not in it for the fame. You know, I'm in it to reach hearts, to reach those souls, to reach people, God's people. So uh, if anything, you know, sharing the post reaches me a lot more. It means a lot more to me than any amount of money that may come through any day or any time. So. Exactly. So yeah. and, and for those who, who want to know the website, you can see it as a comment in the comment. Dr. Bracey has put the website on there. And uh, you also get an invite from uh, uh, Minister Henderson. She and I, we connected. She is a visionary who has, um, at the time she wasn't an author, but she had a vision when she uh, went to an event and saw an author there at a vendor's fair. And, you know, it's like, man, authors need a platform. They need a platform. So God has given her the vision. So for the past three years, uh, she is has uh, hosted one. So one coming up. So she has an invite there for you. If you would like to be a part of that, you can see that in the comment also, uh, since you're an author. And 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 before we conclude and, and let you uh, just give any final word, as a big brother, in the beginning, I mentioned that you are the eldest of Mike and Yolanda Bracey. Yeah. As a big brother, do you... Um, still feel any kind of pressure to be an example because you're obviously the first to get married out the you know, your brothers you're the mm -hmm. oldest mm -hmm. and do you feel any pressure to be an example or are they or is it just kind of a you know we we each live our own life which of course you know everybody has their own life to live but how do you feel as a big brother in what you're doing and how does what you do play a role wearing a big brother's hat? I would say, um, I can't even say that I really live under pressure. At least it's not pressure that I feel anymore. So if it is pressure, I've just become immune to it, I guess you can say. But 
um it's just really like the the, the ministry scripture uh first timothy 4 12 let no one despise your youth but be an example to the believers in word and conduct and love and spirit and faith and in purity um i mean it's just really being an example to them um you know all of my younger brothers christian carlin and caleb all of them are amazing i mean great 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 men of god they all have visions they all have purpose um as the eldest i was like you know what i believe if they see me do this no matter how successful it is or whether i reach many or i reach few i want them to be able to see like man if cameron stepped out and did this and took that leap of faith you know it's all about pioneering it's just really about pioneering and that's really just what i strive to do um it's just pioneer just set that wave make that new road chop down those trees you know let them know hey i did it your path may not look exactly like mine but if your old eldest brother can do it you can do it i mean and i tell them all the time this all of us you know we're, we're pretty much close in age caleb is 18 you know as the youngest and i'm 26 so you see right there already there's just an eight year difference between the eldest and the youngest caleb and i but i mean i tell, tell them all the time hey y'all can do whatever i do y'all can you know whatever is on your mind whatever is on your heart whatever vision god is giving you you can definitely do it i just tell them it's it's just about the commitment you put into it it's about the time you put into it you have to be intentional and it also requires sacrifices too and every sacrifice isn't easy every sacrifice isn't comfortable but in the long run it's going to all pay off and i just believe hey me doing this it's setting the example for my brothers like i want them some day to be able to say you know whenever god decides to take me whenever it's my time to go as all of us know we all have that day that's appointed for us i want them to be able to literally say no cameron stepped out and definitely did that walk he didn't just talk it he walked it he walked the word of god he was not only a believer but he was a doer of the word i want them to be able to say that and i don't believe i give anybody any reasons to say that i don't do that i don't i don't believe that at all anybody who knows me personally knows I don't do the average thing that others may do. Um, and it doesn't mean that I'm better than anybody. It doesn't mean that, you know, I'm also less than anybody. It just means that I'm committed to the purpose in which God has given me. I'm intentional about it. And uh, I know it requires things out of me that it may not require out of others at all times. No different than an athlete who knows they're professional. They have to diet, they have to train, they have certain things to do that your average person may not need to do. That's me. And I, I don't see it as, uh, pressure if anything it's encouragement if anything i see it as a responsibility as a duty as the eldest as a husband as a father now um as a leader overall you know um, i still have to get used to that sometimes people will say you're a leader now and i'm like yeah i gotta get used to that but hey i'm a servant i'm a servant first you know i don't, I don't believe you can be a great leader until you serve so i'm, I'm always a servant first always a servant amen amen yeah. So as we get ready to close out, um, thank you once again for spending your time uh, to be on the podcast, on the Facebook Live. But before we go, I want you to just share whatever's on your heart, what God is, is giving you. Uh, speak to that person who's been in your shoes, yeah. who I don't know, you know what I want to do with my life. I'm I'm doing a career, or I'm in school for something that I really don't have a passion for, or you know, speak to that person who's really doing not much of anything, yeah. or speak to that person who's doing some of everything, but they should get more focused. Yeah. Um, regardless of the age, I believe you will have a word for uh, everyone, whatever season that they're in, to uh, just hone in. Yeah. And get about what God has for them. So go for it. Absolutely. Um, so I definitely, um, I prepared for this actually, uh, the, you know, like I said, that the ministry scripture is first Timothy chapter four, verse 12. Um, let no one despise your youth. Uh, if you're watching this today, youth doesn't necessarily mean you're a teenager. It doesn't mean you're a young child. You can look at that word youth as inexperienced. You can work, look at that word youth as you may not have the education. You may not have the money. You may not even, you may say, I don't even have the time sometimes, but let no one despise your lack of education. Let no one despise your lack of money. Let no one despise your lack of experience. Uh, you want to be an example. You want to actually go out there and do it. Uh, I, I actually, the, the, the part that I wanted to really hone in today is 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 30, verses 32 through 35. And um, just to give a little background on 1 Samuel chapter 17, this is when David got ready to fight Goliath. 
David was a young boy at this time. And here it is, you have all these grown men who were who trained for the military, who were Saul's men, who were strong, who, who worked out. They're all afraid of Goliath. And somebody watching this today is afraid of Goliath. Somebody watching this today is afraid to step out on the water because they feel like I'm not as strong. I'm not as great. I don't have the experience. Here I am. David was bringing some grilled cheese sandwiches. But here it is. You know, you may feel like I've come here today to deliver some grilled cheese. That's how I felt on that stage back in September of 2018. Oh, I'm just here just to bring a little snack. I'm, the other men are going to bring, you know, the, the entrees. They're going to bring the meals. That's not what God has called you to do. When he's brought you onto that battlefield, when he's revealed to you what your purpose is, you pick up whatever you have. David picked up a smooth stone. He was comfortable with his slingshot. He was comfortable with his rock. He didn't go out there with no sword, with no breastplate, with no helmet. He took a slingshot out there and took down Goliath. I want you to know today that whatever God has called you to do, all you need is faith. All you need is a slingshot. It doesn't matter what anybody he says to you, Saul said here, when you read the scripture, it says, then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. David was already determined. He was already, he already had his mindset. I'm going to take down Goliath. The rest of y'all who are experienced, who have all this money, who have these degrees, all of this, if you're not going to do anything about it, I will. You trained, you got these swords ready, but you're sitting over here scared. You have all of these ideas in your head, but no, you're, you're not going to do it. That is not what God has called his children to do. You're going to go out there. I'm prophesying today to somebody. You are going to go out there and you're going to do it. You're going to pick up your slingshot. But there will be people like Saul who will discourage you because Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him for you are a youth and he is a man of war from his youth. Guess what? It doesn't matter if you're in your youth. It doesn't matter whether you've been in it for two years. It doesn't matter whether you've been in it for two months. I came into this. I, and when somebody asked me, you know, Cameron, how long did you have experience leading a company before you started your own? Zero years of experience. How long were you a pastor? How long were you this or were you that? I'm not ordained. I don't have a title. I don't have a seminary degree. But guess what? Because I know that I'm called, because I know that God has anointed me, I went out there and I did it. I picked up my slingshot. I tell people, it's even on the website. I have, his, I have Jesus, I have his word, and I have the Holy Spirit. You can't tell me that I need anything else. I don't ever need to be ordained. That's not going to stop me from teaching. I don't ever need to be recognized as a pastor, an apostle, a prophet, a teacher, or whatever you want to call me. You don't need the title. You don't need the money. All you need is God. You need his word. You have to have faith. Don't lose hope. There will be people who will look at you and say, you are not going to do this. You're not competent enough. You're not educated enough. You don't have the money. Look at where you come from. Who cares where you came from? David came from the sheep. He came from taking care of some sheep and he was bringing grilled cheese sandwiches. You may feel like you're bringing nothing to the table, but God may put you in that place yeah. and he'll, he'll actually present Goliath to you in the midst of where you thought, oh, I'm just here just to make a delivery. I'm just here to bring this Uber Eats. I'm just here to bring this DoorDash. No, no, no. God said, no, I brought you here for a reason. I brought you here for a purpose. You're listening to this podcast. You're watching this video all for a reason because God has a purpose for you. There's a Goliath in front of you right now and people have discouraged you. But I'm gonna tell you right now, you get up and you tell people what you can do. It doesn't matter what's on paper. It doesn't matter what's on your resume. I heard a man of God recently say, a resume only tells you where one has been. It never tells you where they're going. Mm. That's all it is. It's just, the like past. it's just the past. It doesn't matter what's on your resume. What are you going forth to do? What 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 is your vision? What are you called to do? So when Saul said that to David, David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your family may rise up against you. Your friends may rise up against you. People who are experienced may rise up against you. You may have money that rises up against you. All of these people who are afraid to step out on their own or who lack a vision, they're going to rise up against you. But you know what? You got to do what David did. You got to take them by the beard. You got to take them by the throat. You got to take them by the chin and say, my God has called me to do great things. Amen. My God has Amen. called me to do certain things. I know that I'm anointed. I know that I called. I may, I may have just brought some grilled cheese sandwiches, but I see some rocks on the ground that I can work with. I'm going to work with what God has given me and I'm going to knock down that Goliath. 
I hope that encourages somebody today. You go out there, you put stones, and you face your Goliath. You are called, you are anointed, you have a purpose, you have a vision. You go out there, and I'm telling you today, just do it. Stop looking at everything else. Everybody started with nothing. Every great person you see today, they started with nothing. Jeff Bezos started out in his garage with a cardboard box saying Amazon on the front of probably a plastic table. He started with nothing. You start with nothing, and it will grow into something. Mm. That's my word for today. Amen, amen, amen. Whatever, well, there you have it, folks. Just take a moment and just soak that in. Soak that in. You know, take that moment and soak it in because, like you said, there, God will put Goliaths yeah. in your path. David had a boldness because his preparation and his training and That's his right. process that he had already been through right. when he was in that position position immediately that it ignited within him because he was confident not in his own ability not in right. the situation not in king saul or his brothers and all the the soldiers but he was just confident in his relationship with god and i think that's the the important part of this whole message that he just shared is you and god if you if you 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 type with god and yes, you may have some scary moments. And yes, it may be some intimidating things like he shared when he had to get on that platform with, you know, people that were more experienced. And you may feel like you're, you're, you're you know, sort of less than and not worthy of. And, you know, I've definitely been through that many a times with myself, regardless of the credentials that I have, things I've done. Uh, but still, if you in G.O.D. and knowing when you in your journey and in your purpose, there's a certain sweat. Bag, there's a certain confidence. There's a boldness that rises up when that 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 opposition shows up. That's right. And you know it's contrary, regardless of what the situation is, because David wasn't a soldier. That's right. But he knew it was contrary <laughs> to God's will. That's right. So that's, God that's put right. him in position in a place that was contrary to what what was going on with his people. Yeah. And so, yes. therefore, he 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 used uh, the least of these yes. uh, to to rise up and bring deliverance to Israel. And so, and then God elevated him. So God to elevate you. Just 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 trust him. Just 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 trust him. Amen. You know, rely on what he's given you. Rely on the relationship. As I, I like, I do like to watch television as, as I'm working. Usually, I'm working. And I like to have something <laughs> in the background. Uh, one of my shows I like to watch is uh, is it CSI? The one with LL Cool J, whatever it is. Okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I can't think which one. They got so many uh, uh, of the, uh, you know, strands of it. Yeah. But it's the one with LL Cool J. And he was telling one of the junior agents, and she was kind of concerned about this assignment that they had. He kept telling her, as, a, as his character as a, as a Navy SEAL also, he kept saying, trust the training. Trust the training. She's talking about all the different you know things that can hey he said trust the training and so that's right, that's right. what you got to do is realize is that what minister bracy just shared here he has been in training whether it's been formalized or not whether it's through an institution or not god has been taking him through a training so therefore what you saw come out of him is just a taste of what you get you know just to experience if you Follow him on his social medias, follow him on his website, connect with him. Like he said, just make sure we're clear. He's not starting a church. He is not trying to make sure it's clear. It's a ministry. God has things that he's called us to do. And we can, it's okay. We can serve under, you know, our, 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 our who we serve under is Family Christian Center, yeah. Pastor Steve Muncy, yeah. a powerful, worldwide, influential, uh, like none other pastor, but still. God has called each of us to different things that we also have ministry work uh, that we do, just like I'm doing this podcast. It's a part of, of ministry of what, what I'm doing. But just trust the process and the training that you're going through. Trust God, what he's doing in your path. Trust God, um, what he's, he's doing with you, even though it may not seem you know that significant. There's going to come a time when the Goliath going to show up. It's coming contrary to what God's will is. That Goliath is going to show up. Mm -hmm. The question is, will you? That's right. Will you? Amen. Will you Amen. shrink back or will you show Amen. up? 
So just trust, just trust, just trust. Um, continue to build. One thing I admire about him is just his his passion and, and his, his 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 passion and love for God and what um, God is doing in his life. So if you got that, you're good. You 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 really are good. Like and, and, and yeah, you're good. You know what I mean. And it, it gives you a peace that surpasses all understanding, and um, it may, gives you a confidence. Like he said at first, a shame to share that. Oh man, I, I failed out. I've never failed out of anything. And so went through that season of, of being ashamed. But then once you start to trust the training, when God take him through that training with him, man, you that's can't look, listen. You don't become arrogant. You just become good. confident in, in his relationship uh, with God. So we just, that's the one thing. If you don't get out of this whole interview, it's just continue to build that relationship with God. Continue to, um, because we are living in a time in which that book of Revelation, them, them chapters, in the Old Testament that gave prophetic word of what's to come, it's coming to pass, and it's coming to pass fast. Yeah. Coming to pass fast. So we don't, we don't, we don't have time to be. Oh, I wonder. I wonder. God is talking to us. He talked to you today. He talked to you today through through Cameron Bracy Ministries right here. So I want you to make sure that you share this broadcast. It will be available as soon as we're done. Plus, I'm going to repost it uh, through YouTube link. And then you can share it that way. So encourage other folks. Encourage, like you said, one of the best gifts you can give for him and his ministry is to share a message that God has spoken through him. So when we have this, please share it. Share it and encourage someone. You may not have the words to say to encourage that friend or that family. Hey, why don't you listen to this broadcast? It's somebody who's our age. Just listen to what he got to say. What's the worst that can happen? Amen. So Cameron Bracey. I want to thank you, sir, for taking your time. Thank you to your family, because I know, of course, you know, your wife, your two beautiful children. Thank you for taking the time to be a part of this podcast today. Thank you for being obedient. Thank you for your example. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for uh, just being, as, as, as I always love to see uh, your mom, Dr. Bracey, whenever she, she, she reminds me of my mother. Uh, an encourager yes. of her children. My mother had all boys. And so an, an encourager of her sons. Yes. And um, anytime you, one of y'all say something that 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 is, you know, really prophetic or really on point, I always look forward to her, her, her comment. <laughs> Simple three, 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 three letters, capital S-O-N, exclamation, exclamation. I always look for that. Did it tonight. So it, <laughs> yeah, she sure did. I always look for that because I, I, I know she's going to put that, that. That's just, that's just, and I, I'm not sure that means the world to you all. Yeah. And it has a lot to do with not only just her, but your father too, <clears throat> that it has a lot to do with who you all are yeah. as men, as men of God who love God. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it's just wonderful. Not everyone is blessed to have uh, parents who are encouraging or who, right. who raise us up in the church or in the word of God or surrounded us with people um, and to be that example. So um, it's truly a blessing. It's truly a blessing not to take lightly. And so we're thankful for that. We're thankful for them and being them, their obedience and raising four men who are going to uh, just continue to change this world. So thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you. Hey, you all go on his website, Cameron Bracey, that's B-R-A-C-E-Y, ministries.org. You make sure that you support. November 11th, he'll be helping to feed uh, for the Thanksgiving season. Christmas time, be blessing people, uh, school, uh, helping uh, college students in school. So you all just be a part of what he's doing, okay? Let that be an extension of, of, of your giving and just bless the ministry and just be a part of it. Connect with them. Watch the podcast, watch his uh, Facebook uh, uh, Bible studies that he does and a lot of other different things. So uh, we just want to make sure that God just continues to encourage and, and use him in the mighty way that he's called to do. So thank you, sir. God bless you. you. God bless everyone for watching and stay tuned next week. We have more great guests coming up. All right. Yeah. God bless. Take God care. Bless